Alhamdulillah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون Allah has given you the prescription of fasting just as he prescribed it for the peoples before us all of the previous religious traditions had some element of fasting in their tradition the Christians used to fast for 40 days the Jews also had fasting, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us fasting. And then he gives us the reason, it's called tanbihul kitab, when Allah tells you why he's doing something. لَعَلَّكُمْ <clears> تَتَّقُونَ <throat> In order that you learn piety. This is one of the most important elements of fasting, is to learn piety. And from piety is sabr, and that's why Ramadan is the month of patience. It's learning to be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says the, the command that he gives in Al-Baqarah, is that he created us and those that were before us and then he told us to worship him that we might be pious, that we might learn this taqwa. And so the, the Ramadan is a madrasa, it's a, it's a school, it's like continuing education that you go back to, like a physician or anybody that's in a, a type of practice that needs uh, the skills to be upgraded, enhanced. Ramadan is the yearly time that we return to this school of taqwa and of sabr. The Jumu'ah is the weekly time. The prayers are the daily times that we return, we realign ourselves with the divine. Human beings are in heedlessness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَضْحَكُونَ وَتَبْكُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ سَامِدُونَ You laugh. You, we, and you are in a state of heedlessness, that you, you, you forget your Lord. This is one of the deepest illnesses of the human being. Imam al-Junaid, when he was asked what he thought the foundational sin of the human being was, he said that it was ghafla. It was heedlessness, because all sins emanate from heedlessness. But there's another reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this uh, practice of fasting. In the, in the verses that follow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, First of all, لَعَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ أَيَّامِ الْمَعْدُودَاتِ Ayam is called جَمْعُ قِلَّةِ It's a, a plural of paucity. It's a plural that indicates that there, there is not much of it, like amwal. Because wealth, mal, there's not much of wealth. People don't have a lot of wealth. So amwal is the plural of wealth to indicate that wealth is something that is limited. Ayam al-ma'dudat limited days you have a few days and then woman can min kum maridan aw ala safaran fa iddatun min ayam al akhar but you can make up those days if you were sick or traveling wa ala alladhin yutiqunuhu fidyatu ta'mi masakin or fidyatu ta'mu miskin that if you if you're uh, if 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 you you're able to do it then you can give fidya so you pay that was abrogated uh, by the verses that follow. So people used to be able to do fidya if they were wealthy, they could do fidya, but that was removed. And everybody has to fast unless you're sick, uh, and then you can do fidya for that. But other than that, everybody has to fast. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this fidya to ta'min miskin, waman tatawwa khayran fa huwa khayrun lahu. And whoever does uh, extra, this is better for him. Again, those were abrogated, but they still apply to nafila fasting. You draw near to your Lord with nawafil, with extra acts, until Allah loves you. And so fasting is one of the ways, three months, uh, three days out of the month, it was the practice of the Prophet ﷺ. Some of the Sahaba practiced the fast of Dawood ﷺ, which was every other day. Some practice Monday and Thursday. But the Prophet himself, his practice was three, Ayam Rabayal, the three days of the, the white day. The white days. So the fasting woman, But to fast is better for you. That's if you have a choice. Like if you're traveling, it's better to fast. Some say, though, if there's difficulty, that you should leave it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan al-Ladi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. 
This shahar, this month, is the month that the Qur'an was revealed. The Qur'an, the inzal of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadri. On the 27th, according to most of the scholars, but the Prophet said, look for it in the odd days of the last 10 days. The Qur'an came down to sama'u dunya, the entire Qur'an. Jibreel alayhi salam brought the Qur'an down to the, the, this earthly canopy, the heavens, the earth of the heavens. And then over 23 years, kana munazzalan, mufarraqan. It was revealed piecemeal to the Prophet sallallahu based on the circumstances and the incidents over uh, the lives of the Sahaba and the Prophet himself وسلم. So the Quran came down in Zal one time and then over 23 years Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it through Jibreel Allamahu Shadeed Al-Quwa piecemeal. So this is Shahru Ramadan. It represents the gift of the Quran which is why we return to the Quran in Shahru Ramadan. The Prophet وسلم, said in a sound hadith he said Inna siyama wal Qur'ana yashfa'ani lil abdi. The, 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 the fasting and the Qur'an will intercede for you. Allah gives them a voice on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and they intercede for people that practice it. What does Siyam say? Qala Siyamu mana'atuhu wa ta'ama wa shahawat fi naharihi fa shafa'ni fihi. I prevented him from his appetites in the daytime and from uh, his food and so allow me to intercede for him. Al-Quran yaqul manna'atuhu nawmuhu bil-layli I prevented him from sleeping at night. These are the things that we do so fasting is not just in the daytime there's an element in the nighttime which is sleeping less than we normally sleep. So we eat less than we normally eat and we sleep less than we normally sleep and what is the gift? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts her فَيُشَفَّعَانِ He grants them their shafa'a for the servants that do this. Look at the Prophet sallallahu He didn't increase his tahajjud وَمِنِ اللَّيْلِ تَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِرَةً لَكْ He didn't increase his prayers in Ramadan. We do to get closer to the practice of the Prophet that he did every, all day, every year. يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُزَمِّرُ قُومَ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا نُصْفُهُ وَأَنْقُصْ مِنْهُ قَلِيلًا أَوْ زِدْ عَلَيْهِ وَرَتِّلُ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا That was his practice the whole year. The Prophet was practicing. He didn't increase his, his practice of prayers. Aisha رضي الله عنه عطاء One of the great salaf. عطاء said دخلت على عائشة فقلت لها يا يا عائشة أخبرين بأعجب ما رأيت من رسول الله Tell us the most wondrous thing that you saw from the Messenger of Allah. And she said, Ayu sha'nihi laysa ajaba. What thing that he did wasn't wondrous. Walakin dakhala alayya layla fadakhala firashi. He came one night to me and he entered into the, the bed with me. Hatta masa jilduhu jildi. I could feel his flesh up against my flesh. فَقَالَ يَا إِبْنَةَ أَبِي بَكَرْ ذَرِينِي أَتَعَبَّدُ لِرَبِّي O daughter of Abu Bakr, leave me to go and pray to my Lord. And she said, وَاللَّهِ إِنِّي أُحِبُّ قُرْبَكَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ I love to be close to you. لَكِنْ أُوثِرُ هَوَاكْ But I prefer what you prefer. فَقَامَ he got up to the place, the water container, and he did wudu. And it was a light wudu. So he began to cry until the tears covered his chest. And he continued like that until Bilal came and he told him the prayers come in. In other words, Fajr. So Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, ma yubkik, ma yubkik, wa qad ghafara Allahu laka ma taqaddama min dhambika wa ma ta'akhara. What is making you cry when, the prophet, when your 
sins are anything you've done. And his sins are doing a virtuous thing when a more virtuous thing could be done. When all your sins have been forgiven, what passed and what is to come. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Awram akun abdan shakura. Should I not be a grateful slave? Should I not be a grateful slave? In the hadith, in a similar hadith in Al-Bukhari, حَتَّى تَوَرَّمَتْ قَدَمَا فَسَأَلَتْهُ فَقَالَ أَوَلَمْ أَكُنْ عَبْدًا شُكُرًا He stood until his feet had the edema from, from, from standing so long. And he said, shouldn't I be a grateful slave? Gratitude. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفْرًا فَعِدَّةٌ مِنَ أَيَّامَ الْأُخْرَ يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ الْعُسْرَ Allah wants ease for you in this fasting. He doesn't want hardship for you. مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرَانَ لِتَشْقَى He didn't reveal this Qur'an for you to be miserable. He wants ease for you. وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ In order for you to complete this fasting, in order for you to, to elevate your Lord, to declare His greatness, and in order for you to be grateful. Gratitude. This is the secret of Ramadan. This is the time to be reminded. Ya yuhalladina amanu, kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnaakum. Washkuru lillahi in kuntum iyyahu ta'budun. O you who believe, eat of the good things of Allah, but show gratitude for those things. If you are truly worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the most blessed things that we have in this world is food. It brings us together. It nourishes our bodies. It sustains us. And then the pleasure of food itself. This is a great gift. Allah could have made brackish water that we had to drink. He could have given us rocks that we had to crush as our nutrition. But He gave us cherries and grapes and figs. He gave us very varieties of meat. He gave us all of the blessings that the earth brings forth. What, is, what does Allah ask us? Shukr. اعملوا آل داود شكرا وقليل من عبادي الشكور Work, do things out of gratitude. O oh, Al Dawood, and how few of my servants are always grateful. Always grateful. Awalam akun abdan shakura. This is, he didn't say awalam akun abdan shakira. Shouldn't I be a grateful servant? Shakir, you can be shakir one time or another time. When you're shakur, it's called sigha mubalagha. It's the form of hyperbole. It means you're always grateful. Our Prophet ﷺ was always in a state of gratitude. This was his, his whole experience of the world was gratitude. One of the worst things about modern times is ingratitude is cultivated in people. They're, they're ungrateful for the police. They're ungrateful for government. They're ungrateful for their educations. They're ungrateful for everything. People just complain all the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَأَذَّنَا رَبُّكُمْ لَا إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَا أَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَا إِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ الشديد. Your Lord has declared, if you're grateful, I will increase you in blessings to be grateful for. But if you are an ingrate, if you lack gratitude, in fact, if you show ingratitude, I will give you more reasons to be ungrateful. I will give you more reasons to be ungrateful. This is a metaphysical equation. Gratitude equals increase in blessings. Ingratitude equals decrease in blessings. This is a qaida, it's a law. It's a metaphysical law that's as true as the Newtonian physics that you learned in high school. If you're ungrateful, then Allah will give you more to be ungrateful about, more to whine about. You think it's bad now? You have no idea how bad it can get. Read history to know how bad it can get. You think Syria is bad? Read about the Mongol invasion. They didn't have any place to flee to. You, th you think the Muslims are having tribulation in America? Read about Nazi Germany and what happened to the Jews. We have to be grateful because if we're ungrateful and always complaining, Allah is going to give you more to complain about. I was in one of the Gulf states 
and somebody was complaining about the price of gasoline, the taxi driver, 25 cents at the time. <laughs> now it's a lot higher. Why? Because they keep complaining. Go ahead, complain all you want. Because if you love to complain, Allah will give you plenty to complain about. But if you want to show gratitude, Allah will give you plenty to show gratitude about. They did a study at Davis. It's called the Gratitude Study for Depressed People. They had them write down every day, every morning, 10 things they were grateful for. Over a period of a month, people's depression started being lifted. When ta'uddu ni'matullah la tahsuha. If you start counting the blessings of Allah, you'll never come to an end. And you can count blessings like just eyelashes. The people don't have eyelashes. They fall out. The eyelashes are a wonderful blessing. Or some people have dry eyes. So if you have moisture in your eyes, what a blessing. If you have teeth, what a blessing. If you don't have teeth, if you have dentures, what a blessing. There's people that don't have dentures. If you lose one arm, what a blessing. You didn't lose both arms. If you lose both arms, what a blessing. Now they have prosthetic devices that enable you to do things. Ibn Abbas said, in every tribulation in dunya, there are three blessings hidden that you have to recognize. The first is that it could have been worse. The second is that it's in your dunya and not in your deen. And the third, in your worldly affairs and not in your religious affairs. And the third, it's in this world and not in the next. And you should be grateful for that. People now are complaining. Allah said, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala." He's going to try you to see who of you are the best in actions. وَلَا نُبْلُوَنَّكُمْ We're going to try you. لَتُبْلَوُنَّ فِي أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ You will be tried in your, in your wealth and in your lives. وَلَا تَسْمَعُونَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُتُوا الْكِتَابِ مِنْ قَبْرِكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذَنْ كَثِيرًا Allah told us, you're going to hear all these people telling how horrible you are and how terrible your religion is. Allah said that. What does He say? How's our response? What's our response? وَإِنْ تَصْبِرُوا And if you show patience, وَتَتَّقُوا And show piety, restraint, control yourselves. فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ Because that is at the essence of this matter. That is at the essence of this matter. This is our deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَرِيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَا وَضَرْبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا قَرِيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَا مُطْمَئِنَّا يَأْتِيهَا رِزْقُهَا مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ فَكَفَرَتْ بِأَنْعُمِ اللَّهِ فَأَذَاقَهَ اللَّهُ لِبَاسِ الْجُوعِ وَالْخَوْفِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَصْنَعُونَ Allah strikes a similitude for you to think. A similitude. Allah strikes a similitude for you to reflect. A township, a city, a hamlet that was peaceful. It was tranquil. It had provision in abundance coming from every place. Like we have today, we eat berries from Chile and we drink tea from China. And we have rice from India, basmati rice in your homes from India. You get all this blessing from all over the world. So what did they do? Instead of saying, Alhamdulillah wa shukurillah, Alhamdulillah, kafarat bi an'umillah. They were ungrateful. This is the meaning of kufr. Kufr is ingratitude. You can be a Muslim and be a kafir in the meaning that you're, in, you're an ingrate. Right? This is ingratitude. That's the essence of kufr. The essence of Islam is gratitude, shukr, a feeling of blessing that Allah has given. The biggest blessing is that we exist. Ni'mat al ijad wa ni'mat al imdad. The blessing of giving us our existence and then sustaining our existence. He could take away that sustenance at any time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he, he enveloped that city in hunger. Look of the blessing of food, in hunger and terror. Hunger and terror. Libas al-ju'i wal-khawfi. Why? Bima, ba'a What's the cause? Because of their ungratefulness. And this is where we've lost an understanding of our religion. We look at all these events and we don't see the real source of these events. Ingratitude. If we want to change the world, we have to change our state and our attitude. 
about all these blessings that we've been given. Government is a blessing. Even the worst form of government is better than anarchy. Even a tyranny is better. This Malik ibn Anas said this. These, these weren't ignorant people. These were genius people. Because he lived through civil wars. He saw what happens when things break down. The people of Damascus, six years ago, were eating beautiful food. They had good clothes. It was one of the few countries on the planet that was actually self-sustained. And now, all of this tribulation. And if you say, you know, why is it happening to them and not us? Maybe because Allah loves them more. Because we know Ahl Sham have a maqam. So Allah will put all of the, 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 the torment of the akhirah, He'll put it in the dunya for a short period, and then they go back to Allah completely free of any tribulation or punishment. Maybe it's the places that aren't being afflicted, that deserve to be afflicted, that should be worried. This is the way Muslims traditionally looked at things. When the Mughal came down, when the Mongols came down, they didn't say, these evil Mongols. They said, This is a punishment God has sent to us because of our wrong actions. That's how they looked at it. Muslims don't look at that anymore. Evil America, evil Israel, evil... Okay. Good. Allahumma marik al mulk tutil murkam and tasha. Allah put them in power. He says he gives power to whomever he pleases. Muslim had it. If Muslims had nuclear weapons right now with the idiots that we have, we would have nuclear conflagrations all over. Allah knows what he's doing. Allah knows who he gives power to. Yes, they abuse their power, but to what degree? Who would be worse? People want the destruction of America. Well, let's see what happens when China gets the world power. See if there's going to be an Abu Ghraib that you hear about. See if there's going to be any way, recourse to redressing any wrongs. Allah Ta'ala Alam, I don't know. But sometimes the worst things are, are answered prayers. <laughs> we don't know. It's a different way of looking at the world. People don't want to look at it that way. But I read the Quran, and the Quran, it comes back to me. When they were asked, where did this calamity come from? Allah says, It's from your own selves. It didn't say, oh, it's from those evil Quraysh. <laughs> those evil Quraysh. No, Allah wanted the Quraysh to become Muslim. دخل عليهم رسول الله ماذا تقول تقولون فيا أخ كريم ابن أخ كريم you're a noble son of a noble اذهب اليوم فأنتم الطلقاء you're free today I forgive you he said what لا تثريب عليكم he said what Yusuf said to his brothers who threw him in a well and left him to die لا تثريب عليكم because that's the state of believers when they get angry, yes, we get angry. But they realize, what am I really getting angry at? At a test that God sent me? Who am I really angry at? See, you can be humanly angry, but who are you really angry about? If everything is a test from Allah, then who are you really angry at? That's a question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ تَأَذَّنَا رَبُّكُمْ وَتَأَذَّنَا رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ This is, these are days of shukr. لِلصَّائِمِي فَرْحَتَانِ you, you, you have two joys. فَرْحَتُونَ حِنَا يُفْتِرُ وَفَرْحَتُونَ حِنَا يَلْقَى رَبُّهُ He has a joy when he completes, he breaks his fast because he's completed the ibadah. And then the delight of the food, most of the big ulama said, it's itmam uh, ta'a, it's completing that. That's the farha, it's not the food. It's actually finishing the ibadah. That's Imam Nahawi, high maqam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ shakur. The Prophet was shakur, but he told us to be shakur. One of the Arifin said, هَذَا ضَمِيرُ ذَاتِ هَؤُلَا عِبَادُ الذَّاتِ هُنَكَ عِبَادُ الْأَسْمَى So, that's a high maqam. It's where you're always grateful. وَالشُّكْرُ صَرْفُ الْعَبْدِ مَا أَوْلَاهُ مَوْلَاهُ مِنْ نِعْمَاهُ فِي رِضَاهُ This is what uh, all the ulama taught and Muhammad uh, uh, al-Musawi said is the meaning of shukr, real shukr. Shukr 
is to utilize what God has given you. I'miru ala Dawood, shukran. To utilize what he's given you out of gratitude. He gave you an eye to see, not to look at pornography. He gave you a, a, a tongue to speak the truth, not to lie, not to cheat, not to backbite. He gave you a hand to work and, 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 and not to steal or to embezzle or to take things that aren't yours. He gave you feet to walk in righteousness. The servants of, of the merciful who walk, tread lightly on the earth. You know, they talk about carbon footprints now. Carbon footprints. Ibadur Rahman don't have a carbon footprint. They tread lightly on the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we revealed this book on Laylatul Qadr. And what will convey to you what Laylatul Qadr is? Laylatul Qadr, khayru min alfi shahr. It's better than 83 months of worship. The Prophet was, because he was so covetous about solicitous for his ummah, he was concerned that his ummah would not have a lot of rewards when he knew that the ancients had much longer lifespans. So this is min khasaisi rahmati wa min khasaisi ummati. This is a specific gift to this ummah. That they have a night that is worth months of ibadah. And so in a lifetime, you can literally get years added onto your ibadah. This is a great gift from Allah. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, man, man qama Ramadan, Whoever stands doing extra acts, tahajjud and the tarawih, stands doing extra acts, he has his sins forgi forgiven of what passed. Waman sama Ramadan, iman and wahtisaban, ghufira lahuma taqadama min dhambihi. And whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, Believing in Allah and believing that the reward is from Allah. Asiyamu li wa ana ajzibi. Fasting is my own and I reward it myself. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Wa man qama in the hadith sahih. Wa man qama laylat al qadri imanan wa ihtisaban. Ghafar Allah lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi wa ma taakhar. Whoever stands on Laylatul Qadr in belief and expecting a reward from Allah, he will have his sins forgiven. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, As-salawatu wal-jumu'atu ila al-jumu'a wa ramadanu ila ramadan mukaffirat lidhunum. That your prayers, each day you pray, mashtuniba aw mashtanaba al-kaba'ir. As long as he avoids major wrong actions. The prayer, the five prayers that you do, and then Jum'ah to Jum'ah, praying Jum'ah and from Jum'ah to Jum'ah, Friday prayer to Friday prayer, and then Ramadan to Ramadan. These will remove your sins. They will remove your sins as long as you avoid major wrong actions. That needs a specific type of tawbah. Sagha'ir get removed from wudu, from prayer, from fasting, from Jum'ah, all these things. But the major wrong actions, Right? And the ulama differ on them, but the major ones are well known. Drinking, stealing, cheating, lying, fornication, adultery, all those things that Allah has declared foul, fahsha. So this Ramadan is a great gift of this ummah. It's a time of special gratitude. One of the hallmarks of gratitude is that you share your blessings with others. You share your blessings with others. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس وأجود ما يكون في شهر رمضان كان أجود من ريح مرسلة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was the most generous of men, always. But he was even more generous in Ramadan. Why? زيادة الشكر. The the sense of blessing, the gift. It's a great gift. أقولوا قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم رسائل المسلمين. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله ومن والاه. 
we have a lot of tribulation in our community at home and at abroad. We have tribulations, just each person has their own. Each one of you can give me a litany of tribulations. This is just dunya. Daru bala'in. Do dinki dunya hai. This, this is dunya. So all those tribulations that you have, if you put them next to all the blessings you have, they're nothing. And that's why if you focus on your tribulations, you'll become ungrateful. If you focus on your blessings, you'll become grateful. I advise myself and all of you to count our blessings. This is my advice. And Ramadan is one of the greatest blessings. People say, oh, it's so hard. How do you fast a whole month without water? Oh my God. <laughs> People cry. The righteous cry when Ramadan ends. You see the blessings of this month. What hunger do we really have? Really? It just makes you appreciate the, the cornucopia of food that you have. Wallahi. So this is my advice. We need to show more gratitude and stop complaining. Complaining, Iblis, Iblis is the complainer in the Quran. He complains all the time. He's so upset about things. And he wants to just make us ungrateful. It's his favorite thing to do. Make us ungrateful. Make you ungrateful for your wife. Make your wife ungrateful for you. Microaggressions. You know, all these grievance theory and victimology. All of it, it's a disease that Iblis has spread amongst this humanity. It's a disease. Racism is a reality. What, racism didn't exist in the past? How did people respond to racism? Abu Bakr, the, Abu Ghafar, the Prophet said, you're a man that has, still has jahiliya in you. He didn't say, you're a racist. How dare you, Abu Dhar? You racist man. He didn't say that. He said, there's still some ignorance in you. That's what racism is, it's just ignorance. What, because your color is different from me means that you're less than me or I'm more than you or you're more than me and I'm less than you? That's ignorance. You cut the person, he bleeds, tickle him, he laughs. Deprive him of food, he gets hungry. Make him angry, he gets angry, right? Human beings. That's the human being, it's a human condition. So how do we deal with racism? Because clearly it's a problem on the planet. It always has been. How did the Prophet deal with it? He educated people. You could do better than that. Abu Dhar put his hand, face on the ground and begged Bilal to put his foot on his face. Kafaratan. Just for saying, Ya bin Sauda, which is like using the N-word today. That's what he asked him to do. Forgive me. I, I, ignorance is from jahiliya. That's what the beauty of Islam. It teaches you how to be different. All these problems have been around. How do we address them? How do we look to the future? All this grievance from the past. The English did horrible things. They did horrible things to my ancestors, mostly from Ireland, 700 years of oppression. That's not the English people today. They didn't do that. They didn't conquer India. Those people are all dead. I just met an Armenian man. It was, it was in the doctor's office. And he said, uh, I said, have you ever been to Turkey? He said, no, I can't go there. I said, why? He said, and then I looked at him. He looked Armenian. I said, are you Armenian? He said, yeah. And then he was like, oh, why do you say that? I said, because that's, that prejudice that you're displaying is, 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 is cultural. Those Turks today had nothing to do with what those Turks did 100 years ago. Don't blame them. They're good people. I said, War makes people do horrible things. American boys that went to Iraq, they were nice boys, many of them. If you met them, you'd find them pleasant people. You'd sit with them, have coffee, talk to them. When they went into that horrific condition of war, they became murderers. This is what war does to people. They do, and now they come back, and what do they do? They get addicted to drugs. They commit suicide because they cannot believe what they actually did. This is what war does to people. That's why it's such an evil. We have to let these grievances go. Kulukum min Adam wa Adam in Turab. We're all Benu Adam. We're all children of Adam. We're all cousins. If we went back far enough, we would see. We, somewhere down the line, 
We're, we're cousins. We're family. This is the human condition. And every, we have uncles that people want to kick out of the family, but you can't. Right? There's people, they're, they're, they're terrible. But this is the reality. How do we make it better? Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima kathira. Allahumma taqabal minna siyamana wa qiyamana. Uqfil lana wa rahamna wa tub alayna. Allahumma tub ala al-Muslimin jami'an. Allahumma khafaf an masaibina ya Allah fi kulli makan. Allahumma ja'na shakirin bi al-sinatina. Wa shakirin bi ajinnatina. Wa shakirin bi jawarihina. Allahumma ja'na shakirin. Allahumma adkhulna al-jannata bil-shukri. اللهم ادخلنا الجنة بالشكر اللهم كفر عنا الذنوبنا وجعلنا من عتقاء رمضان اللهم اجعلنا من عتقاء رمضان اللهم اجعلنا من عتقاء رمضان اللهم بارك صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذا القرباء وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم واشكره ولا تكفرون Remember God and, and don't forget him and be grateful and don't be ungrateful That's what we say The last thing I wanted to say Subhanakum wa bihamdika shadun la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruk wa tubu ilayk Eid al-Fitr When we have the Fitr for people just a reminder Zakat al-Fitr is an obligation on everybody that you have nafaqa for In other words all of your dependents you have to give the, uh, the Eid al-Fitr and, and the Sa'ad, traditionally it was given on the day, when, on the way to the prayer. The Hanafis permit it uh, before, which is a blessing. We, we can use these opinions because it's difficult in America for people to do things always. And they also permit it with money. The other Imams, they say you give it with like dates or wheat or rice or something. So there is a monetary, does, do you, do, what is it, how much? $5 for Hanafi and 7 for Shafi. Okay, so it's between 5 and 7. To get out of Khilaf, it's always good to go to the higher. So I would say, you know, give $7 uh, for each person in your family. And, and there's, they have the boxes and everything. But do that because the, the fasting is mu'allaq. It's, it's suspended. It won't go to Allah until you've done the zakat al-fitr. Zakat al-fitr is only for, there's eight categories in, in Tawbah, in the 60th verse in Tawbah. إِنَّمَا صَدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْعَمِرِينَ عَلَيْهَا وَالْمُؤَلِّفَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَالْغَارِمِينَ وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ فَرِيضَةً مِنَ اللَّهِ right? So this is a farida. It's only for fuqara and masakin. That's, that's the zakat al-fitr.